Many people refer to this type of deep sea trawler as the extinction net. With the capacity to haul up 200 tons of Alaska Pollock in one sweep, it aptly embodies the phrase, one net, all fish. Yet the fisheries department strictly governs their fishing seasons and catch quotas. Furthermore, due to the robust reproductive strength of the Alaska Pollock, even with vast amounts of fishing, it only accounts for about 15% of the total Pollock population in the Bering Sea. This ship is the Northern Eagle, one of North America's most technologically advanced deep sea trawlers. Unlike others who cast and dry their nets, the Northern Eagle processes its catch as it trawls. It's essentially a floating fish processing plant, rivaling terrestrial factories in scale. Capable of processing 100,000 pollocks an hour, this marine behemoth measures around 345 feet in length and 52 feet in width. The entire processing plant is housed on the lower deck, and it can freeze and process over 200 tons of fish daily. At the helm of the Northern Eagle is Captain Jens, boasting 31 years of experience in the fishing industry. Today, he will be leading a crew of 140 on a high seas fishing expedition. The crew's income hinges entirely on the quantity of fish they catch. With a bit of luck, a month-long voyage could earn each crew member up to $15,000. Alaska, their destination, is a frozen wilderness, far removed from any mainland. Amid the northern gales and bone-chilling cold that plunges temperatures to as low as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, the Northern Eagle remains here for six to seven months each year. In January, the peak of the Alaska Pollock spawning season, large swarms of fish gather, presenting the perfect fishing opportunity. In these same waters, a competition ensues amongst 60 to 70 fishing boats, with the Northern Eagle being the most prominent star amongst them. Before setting sail, engineers meticulously inspect and repair every component. Any malfunction during the stormy navigation through the Bering Sea could spell disaster, jeopardizing not only the catch, but also the crew's safety. The American Seafood Company, as the world's largest Pollock supplier, relies heavily on the Northern Eagle, their largest vessel. The onboard factory is thus in a constant state of testing and preparation. With all problems resolved within a day, the time to set sail beckons. This voyage, spanning two weeks, tests the mettle and experience of the captain and the crew as they ply the perilous waters of the Bering Sea. With winds of force 10 and waves reaching over 30 feet high being a common occurrence, it's undoubtedly one of the world's most dangerous jobs. Yet, this vessel, like a marine titan, stands fearless against the stormy onslaught, its course set firm by the captain's reliable expertise. The captain initially heads for their last fishing grounds, which yielded a substantial catch just a few days ago. Using sonar, they scan the seafloor, a full 360-degree sweep around the ship. But today, fortune isn't on their side. No trace of Pollock is detected in this area. The undercurrents have swept away the Pollock's food, and the fish have migrated elsewhere in pursuit. In the absence of a catch, the crew can only wait, their hopes vested in their captain. It's noteworthy that Pollock is the only species known to school at depths between 328 to 1968 feet. As soon as the sonar picks up their presence, the captain swiftly initiates the net lowering procedure. The crew on deck lower the net to the seafloor, about 1640 feet deep, extending it over half a mile away. Multiple tension sensors attached to the tail of the net monitor its load. A single cast of this net can yield up to 200 tons of deep-sea pollock. The net's entry point is equipped with a camera, capturing footage of the fish swarm entering the net. Of the catch, 95% consists of deep-sea Pacific cod, with other fish species making up the remaining 5%. This aligns with the governmental regulations, making it an exhilarating moment when the net is hauled in. At the moment when the fishing net is about to surface, even seabirds, attracted by the scent of fish, gather around. Next, the crew unties the rope of the net opening. Countless small fish will flow through the hatch into the processing factory below. They pass through four storage tanks, each with a capacity of about 10,500 gallons. At this point, the captain steps onto the deck, disappointed with the catch, as smaller fish fetch lower prices and take up much storage space. If the catch continues to be small cod, everyone's income will take a big hit. Thus, the captain steers westward in search of larger, more succulent Pacific cod. 
The caught cod is then transferred along a conveyor belt over 2,300 feet long, undergoing processes such as sorting, cleaning, flash freezing, and boxing. Of the 140 crew members, 90 work in the factory below the deck. The workers first sort the fish by size, and then machines are used for decapitation. These machines handle 150 fish per minute, followed by manual deboning and skinning. At this rate, 100,000 Pacific cod can be processed in an hour. The entire fishing process is supervised by a government inspector. Any fish species other than Pacific cod is prohibited from being caught. The processed fish sticks and patties primarily supply fast food restaurants across North America, as Americans prefer boneless and spineless fish. Those operating the machines must be extremely careful as all are fitted with sharp blades, making this a challenging and dangerous job. Yet, for the sake of earning a living, the crew perseveres. The income here is double that of a factory job on land. Once all the fish are cleaned, they are flash frozen and packed into 44 pound boxes and stored in a freezer at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The daily operating cost is a hefty $75,000, so the captain must find more, larger cod. Only the big fish will carry roe, the price of which is five times that of the smaller fish, a significant source of income for the ship. These fish eggs are usually sold in the Japanese market. The moment of pulling in the next haul is filled with anticipation. If no larger cod are caught, this trip will yield little income. However, when the fish are pulled up, smiles of satisfaction appear on their faces. But then, disaster strikes. The water pump in the factory malfunctions. This means all operations must halt. Every day they need to desalinate 172,000 gallons of seawater. Without fresh water, the fish row will quickly discolor and deteriorate, implying a significant loss in income. The ship's engineers have to collaborate and fix the pump. If fish row is a tool for the fishermen to boost their income, then other byproducts can also be profitable. The large, plump Alaskan cod, caught by trawling, are processed in the factory within the ship into a type of fish paste, which is used to produce more than 1,500 different types of fish products. Especially popular are the imitation crab meat products favored by hundreds of millions of people in Asia. Also, a particularly expensive fish oil, loved by Westerners, and fertilizer products made from fish heads and bones account for about 13% of the ship's total income. After five days at sea, although the Northern Eagle Deep Sea Trawler has completed over 500 tons of fish products, the size of the fish is still not ideal. Thus, they decide to continue northward towards the frigid, uncharted territory where others dare not venture. The howling northern wind stirs up waves as high as a three-story building, assaulting the Northern Eagle. For the deckhands, this is a dangerous time. But this is just one of many challenges. The freshwater treatment system below the deck freezes due to the extremely low temperatures. The engineers then pump engine coolant, which is slightly warm, into the water tank, resolving the temporary predicament. If these small fish were to be caught after two or three years, they would yield several times the income. So, to earn money, larger cod must be found. Currently, the ship has just managed to break even. Aside from the machinery malfunction in the factory, there are also issues with the fishing net tearing, testing everyone's resolve. If a tear occurs, everyone must stand on the icy deck to mend it. Otherwise, there's a chance they might not catch any fish. A young man from Congo, age 20, works in the freezer at the bottom of the ship, where the temperature dips to minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit. He is primarily responsible for neatly stacking the frozen, well-packaged fish products. To work here, one must wear thick thermal clothing throughout the fishing season and stack over 70,000 boxes. His family doesn't understand why he chose to work here, but he is very satisfied because he earns twice the wage he would on land. In their quest for a greater catch, the captain boldly navigates the Northern Eagle deeper into the north. The waters here are perilous, teeming with dangerous ice flows, but the crew knows well, no gain without pain. As they push into this icy expanse, they are noticed by the Coast Guard. A regular inspection is executed to prevent illegal activities or unauthorized fishing. The check is comprehensive, but the Northern Eagle passes with distinction. Only hours later, they haul in their first net. Everyone aboard breathes a sigh of relief. It's a whopping 180-ton catch, so massive it breaks the net's rope. 
The fishing operation has taxed the ship's power supply, causing electrical issues due to the simultaneous load from the ship's propeller, the winch pulling in the net, the busy onboard processing plant, and the energy-hungry freezer and storage compartments. If the power problem isn't fixed within 20 minutes, their precious catch could go bad. Thankfully, they managed to fix the issue just in time. As the Northern Eagle ventures further into the frosty north, the prospect of bigger cod and plentiful earnings invigorates everyone. Their expectations are met, the fish are larger, and their row is more abundant than ever. The ship's processing plant buzzes into action, operating at full capacity. The crew is overjoyed, their happiness echoing that of kids during the holidays. Soon, they'll head back to port with a ship loaded with their hard-earned catch. The voyage concludes with an impressive 680 tons of frozen fish fillets and an equal amount of fish liver, destined for Asia to be turned into a variety of seafood products. Additionally, they've got 100 tons of fish oil products, 250 tons of fish meal, and finally, 180 tons of precious roe for the Japanese market. The roe alone is expected to bring in a staggering $2 million. This is the exciting and rewarding life of Alaskan fishermen. That wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed this insight into the world of a fisherman, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Take care.